Hi everybody, my name is Connor McDonald. Follow me on Twitter for information about SQL, analytics, and of course, Ask Tom. Today is the next in the KISS series, keeping it simple with SQL, focusing on analytics. These are short two minute sessions designed to help you solve real problems, not just wander through the syntax guide. In this session, we're gonna look at more classical problems made simple. As Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. A quick recap of the last video. We explored the question, are there any other keywords besides over that might be defined within an analytic syntax? We looked at within group within list ag, but in reality it turned out that all of that belongs in the function clause, thus leaving over as our sole analytic definition. Let's look at another example today. It's called the keep clause. We'll build this up with an example. Here is the first and most simple requirement, which doesn't even require analytics. Show me the lowest salary for each department. That is a very simple SQL. Select department number, min sal, from employee table group by department number. And now we have for each department number, the employee's minimum salary for any employee within that department. However, another requirement might come along saying, and I need to know who has that lowest salary as well. Now that's a bit more of a tricky proposition. If I just add the employee number into my select clause, well, I'll get an error that it's not a group by expression. Now to fix that, I might choose to add the employee number into the group by, but that of course impacts the aggregate. The minimum salary is no longer that by department, it's by each employee within each department and not the answer we want. The way we have to solve it is we take our existing query and we would rejoin back to the employee table on department number and salary to pick up the employee number that actually has that lowest salary. The problem with that is if we look at the execution plan, we've now doubled up the amount of work we're doing. We're visiting the employee table twice. What we'd like to do, logically speaking, is walk through each row in the table, and as we find the lower salary, sort of put a marker or flag the fact that what employee number was the person that picked up that salary, and then move on, same thing for department 20, and work our way through the table, remembering various employee details for the minimum salary that we've encountered. In English terms, we want to keep the employee number for whom the minimum salary was discovered. And that leads us on to the keep clause. Here is our query as we had it before, department number and min salary. The keep clause syntax looks like this. I want to keep the minimum employee number, minimum being defined by ordering by salary, pick up the first based on the dense ranking. It may look a little unusual, but what we're doing effectively is redefining what we mean by min. The terms after the keep say, this is how we define a minimum employee number. And in this case, it's based on salary. As a result, our query shows for each minimum salary displayed, we have the employee number as well. An example there, employee 7900 is the person that has the lowest salary in department 30. The nice thing with that is, it's one pass through the table. We didn't have to double up the workload. We simply did a normal sort, and we did a table access full just once. The question is, does that mean that over is no longer the sole attribute of an analytic clause? Well, no. It turns out that keep is just like within group for list ag. It belongs entirely in the function area. You can run analytics, including a keep clause as well. You can run these scripts yourself by clicking on the live SQL link below. In the next session, we're gonna look at inverse analytics, and we'll talk about that soon. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to keep it simple with SQL.